Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz, and today we're going to be talking about a weak tropical low in the Coral Sea, which is bringing some moderate to heavy rainfall to far north Queensland and is expected to become a tropical low in the Gulf of Carpentaria. The chances of it becoming a tropical cyclone have fallen off pretty significantly, but there is still the high chance of a tropical cyclone forming somewhere in the Coral Sea that will go on to impact Vanuatu and New Caledonia in about a week's time. But more on that later on in the video. If you are brand new to the channel, then please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it and subscribe to the second channel Cyclones Extra for more coverage on cyclonic weather systems around Australia and the world. So starting things off talking about this convective bubble bath here south of the Solomon Islands and towards the southeast of Papua New Guinea you can see it isn't organized in the slightest but there's a lot of thunderstorm activity firing up here. Um, and again, if you were to take a look at a wind model forecast here, there's hardly anything to indicate that this is precursor rainfall to a tropical low. But the Eastern Bluebird is pretty keen on this actually becoming a fully fledged tropical low south of PNG, probably by around Wednesday afternoon or so before it moves into the Gulf of Carpentaria, uh, Wednesday uh, uh, evening and into Thursday and Friday. There is a slim chance that it becomes a tropical cyclone as per this forecast. Uh, but at this stage, I would not be betting any money whatsoever on it at this time. Uh, there's still a pretty good chance we see a tropical low in the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria in the Arafura Sea, but I'll get to that in just a second. Considering the, how far north this tropical low has shifted in the uh, recent forecast runs, the rainfall situation for areas in far northern Queensland has improved dramatically once again. Uh, throughout the course of today around Cairns and uh, Innisfail and that sort of area in far northern Queensland, there will be moderate to heavy rainfall at times, but it's not going to be anything crazy and probably only 50 millimetres throughout the course of today day before it eases off Wednesday uh, and Thursday and it doesn't look like there's going to be much rain for Wednesday or Thursday even as this tropical low moves further north. Uh, there might be a little bit of rainfall Friday in the Daintree sort of area but again absolutely nothing crazy at this time and also this weekend but it really doesn't look like we're looking out for some crazy rainfall accumulations on any particular day but again consistent 30 to 50 millimeter totals over the next 8 to 10 days will provide far north Queensland and areas around Cairns with up to 200 millimeters and as you get further north as well towards Lockhart River more like four to 450 millimeters up there so some significant rainfall can be expected with the passage of this tropical low which will happen between Wednesday afternoon through Thursday into Friday and then uh, hopefully easing off Saturday but still you can see here it remains a fully fledged tropical low for uh, probably Friday Saturday and Sunday and it will have a slim chance of becoming a tropical cyclone um, in that time but again not a hundred percent sure on the specifics um, uh, before the energy sort of shifts over into the coral scene. You can see these two systems over here, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes, but we're going to start, uh, we'll finish things off up here with a look at the forming a tropical cyclone. Now, it's really only the Axis G3 model that's keen on this tropical cyclone anymore, which is sort of what I expected. Both the GFS and the Eastern Relief are expecting a very similar forecast in terms of a tropical low forming here around Thursday and Friday in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Um, the Beef Meteorology is not really on board with this, They've got a 5% chance, and I do think that, that is a little bit low, but at this stage, I don't think that we're going to see a fully-fledged tropical cyclone in the Gulf of Carpentaria, so they're well within their right to say a 5% chance of cyclone formation. The Axis G3, however, has this tropical low kind of just sitting stationary in the Arafura Sea for a couple of days, dropping a pretty healthy amount of rainfall there as well. If that rainfall does get itself over land, it will definitely be causing some problems before it looks like a stronger low-pressure system develops over Indonesia and the island there and then moves into the Arafura Sea as a tropical low. Might get to cyclone status but at this stage it's really too far out to tell and then as it gets deeper into the Arafura Sea and towards the Coral Sea, uh, the Gulf of Carpentaria rather, it really does die off and doesn't provide impacts to Darwin or areas around Darwin. Uh, as I have been saying for the last couple of days, this system, uh, even though it has been threatened to be up towards Category 3 or 4 status at some point in its lifetime, as per the initial Access G3 forecast, this was never a threat to the Northern Territory coastline, um, maybe except for some rainfall on Cape Wessel or some wind gusts on Melville Island. But again, do not uh, worry, even if this does get to a strong cyclone status, it's unlikely that at any point in its lifespan it is going to go for the Northern Territory coastline, so it will likely not be a 
cyclone threat at all, uh, but still something worth keeping an eye on because it will be providing enhanced wave activity and also enhanced rainfall up around the Northern Territory and also far north Queensland as well. I mean, they're expecting some healthy rainfall totals from the precursor low uh, to this tropical cyclone, which will be making its passage across the far north Queensland area in around, uh, I'd say probably 48 hours time. But yeah, you can still see some heavy rainfall situated around Cairns and Innisfail, and that will continue throughout the course of today. Now, just before we go across to Vanuatu and New Caledonia to end the video off, we're going to just jump down towards Brisbane, uh, the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast, and we'll interrupt the video there because we do have some pretty significant rainfall expected at some point this week, uh, towards the end of this week and into this weekend. Now, both the Eastern Bluff and the Axis G3 model are calling for a little bit of a low pressure system to develop just offshore from this, uh, from Brisbane and the uh, northern parts of New South Wales. We're going to be seeing enhanced shower and thunderstorm activity between Sydney up towards uh, the, the Sunshine Coast as well, and that would include Brisbane and the Gold Coast, and some pretty significant rainfall totals can be expected throughout Saturday evening, or Saturday morning, right through Saturday evening and into Sunday afternoon uh, before hopefully easing off by Monday, but still nonetheless, some pretty significant rainfall could be falling there. The Access G3 model really on board with some heavy rainfall falling there at some point, probably around Sunday morning by the looks of things. Um, it should remain coastal. It's probably going to get it over land but it won't be making it anywhere past the um, uh, mountains just outside of Brisbane so areas like Toowoomba or Warwick they'll be uh, high and dry by the looks of things but in terms of rainfall accumulation a healthy 100 to 150 millimeters can be expected uh, along the coastline uh, around Coomera and the Gold Coast maybe 50 millimeters Brisbane 20 millimeters and then up towards areas on the Sunshine Coast 50 millimeters but as we know with shower activity like this on the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast it's very hit and miss sometimes and if you get a heavy shower that can swing uh, the amount of rainfall in a certain locations favor by up to 50 millimeters so this is something that they should really be watching up here because there is a risk of flash flooding throughout Saturday and Sunday. The Eastern Bluff also very much on board with this. The GFS not so much, but that's probably because of model resolution. But by the looks of things, up to 150 millimetres is possible from this sort of low pressure wave that's going to be moving through. In terms of wave heights, it doesn't look like it's going to be a huge low pressure system because wave heights aren't overly uh, large. And winds as well, they'll probably only start getting gusty until about Monday. Um, yeah. Monday and Tuesday, the winds might be a bit fresher, a bit, a bit more gale forced, but that is associated with the developing tropical lows around Vanuatu and Fiji. It looks like some late season cyclone activity is possible there. We're going to draw the forecast models right back to Friday. Uh, do note that yesterday there was actually a tropical low in the Coral Sea. There's still an expected tropical low to form here, but the models have really dropped its chances. You can see it tries to form around Sunday or Monday. This is going to be a very difficult system to predict, so I'm going to get things wrong here and this is a forecast that you have to take with a grain of salt because these late system uh, late season systems are very very difficult to predict they, they tend to embed themselves in cold fronts or uh, low pressure areas like big non-tropical low pressure areas and they do some really weird things they move erratically they develop erratically they've in unfavorable environments and then six hours later they're in favorable environments uh, so forecast agencies and uh, youtubers like myself that really do struggle to get these systems nailed down uh, so don't come for my throat when i get this system wrong because i will probably get this forecast wrong multiple times until about sunday when i can guarantee a good forecast on this system if it does actually happen but i'm just reading what the forecast models are saying right now and considering there is good model congruency meaning the models are fairly happy with a tropical low developing that will become a tropical cyclone probably this weekend south of fiji and the both the access g3 and the uh, gfs model are pretty uh sound and on board with that eastern blue have not so much they're calling for it to happen probably earlier next week but again gfs and the access g3 are calling for it to happen probably around sunday and monday as opposed to Tuesday from the Eastern Blue I'd say that there's a pretty good chance we do see a strong tropical low or a weak tropical cyclone of maybe category one or two proportions moving south of Fiji and Vanuatu. And if you want coverage on this system, you'll be able to find it on Cyclones Extra. It'll be out of the Australian region, so I'll still cover it in these videos, but there'll be much more detailed updates on the Cyclones Extra channel, so make sure you are subscribed to that. In terms of peak wind gusts, because it will be probably a non-tropical cyclone, wind gusts won't be as strong. And you to be seeing some peak wind gusts approaching the very destructive threshold of 125 kilometers an hour and if they do get themselves over land in say Fiji or Vanuatu they will cause some problems and some headaches there. 
So again, nothing to be taken lightly if you live on New Caledonia, Vanuatu or Fiji. It does look like you're in for a bit of strong cyclone activity towards the start of next week or the end of this week and the start of next week. And as I said, it is a very difficult forecast to be making. So I'll be able to give you some definitives probably Saturday or Sunday. But right now, the best I can do is read off the forecast models because uh, precedence really doesn't work in the South Pacific late on in the season. It would be really good if they had some high resolution models dedicated for uh, Fiji or New Zealand. But again, considering the population of the South Pacific area, I mean, there's 10 million people that live around here, including those on New Zealand. There really isn't the demand to send a multi-billion dollar satellite into space to gather good weather data up here. And I know that is a little bit wrong and a little bit harsh, but at the end of the day, uh, the weather models go where the money is. And that's why the Americas have some incredible weather data. And I'd love to show that off in a future video. I mean, some of the weather data that you can find on the web, uh, on uh, even Windy, which is a relatively cheap uh, piece of software to use, uh, you can find some great weather data on that. So I highly recommend checking out windy.com. This is the application that I use to make these videos. But anyway, sorry for the interruption. We're going to now talk about some cold front activity that could be impacting southern Australia probably around next Tuesday or Wednesday. It looks like a series of cold fronts are going to be moving through from the Antarctic areas uh, off Antarctica, I guess, from around uh, the weekend onwards. Looks like that dry spell is going to slowly start to end. I mean, look at this, a little bit of rainfall coming up from the uh, south of the Perth area, but again, there's very little model congruency on that. So, I mean, I'm probably just hoping at this stage, but there could be some significant rainfall accumulations um, around the Tasmanian area associated with these cold front passages. Uh, we're definitely starting to move into this winter period, obviously. I mean, you can see the west coast of Tasmania, it's receiving rain pretty much every single day now. Um, and they're also starting to see more and more rainfall as well. So definitely going to be moving into that uh, wetter period, which is their winter season, and that will hopefully start to creep north uh, over the coming couple of weeks. In terms of snowfall for the next 10 days, absolutely nothing on the cards. That strong cold front that brought the light dusting of snowfall, that's well and truly over. That, well, I mean, it happened a week ago now, um, and it did bring some healthy snowfall totals for a couple of centimetres or so to kickstart the season. But I mean, that is certainly well and truly over. The GFS is calling for half a centimetre of snowfall to fall across central Tasmania over the highlands there, but I think that's just the model trying to throw out something, so I would not bet my money on that whatsoever. But yeah, definitely excited to track some snowfall, forecast some snowfall for Tasmania and that area. You can see the snow line slowly moving further north. It's now at 47 degrees south as opposed to 50 degrees south about a week ago, and New Zealand also copying some pretty healthy snowfall totals as well over there. So again, this winter season, it is approaching, and it is approaching rapidly and I'm very excited to track it here on this channel. The winter forecast dropped as well. That was a successful video so make sure you go and watch that if you haven't already to get a detailed look at what is expected winter weather wise around the nation. There'll be plenty more coverage on this cyclone activity as well. And there's nothing else really happening around Australia by the looks of things. You can tell I'm really pushing to <laughs> find some things to talk about here uh, because apart from that weak tropical low up in the Gulf of Carpentaria it really looks like we're moving into a pretty quiet phase of weather and there's no end in sight as well and I really want to find some things to talk about to make these videos as interesting as possible so we're probably going to start breaking down speckled clouds over in Western Australia at the rate things are going but I'm more than happy to be answering people's questions so leave them in the comments I do still read every single comment by the way I'm struggling to respond to them just out of time but if you've got uh, weather reports for your location I love reading those and also if you've got uh, questions or comments that you'd like me to answer in these videos, then make sure to leave them in the comment section down below as well. I would love to get back to you. In terms of other weather happening around Australia, though, it looks like I'm really going to struggle to push for content here. So I'm going to leave the video here. If you haven't already, then please do subscribe to the channel and also subscribe to the second channel, Cyclones Extra. If you're not a channel member, then do click the join button down below and select a category that you'd like to intensify to. We've only got one right now, the channel sponsors category. But if you'd like to uh, have more, then please do let me know in the comments as well. I've got watch the winter weather forecast as well to get a, a comprehensive outlook at southern Australia's weather over the next six months. That video was a little bit of a pain to make considering the models kept flip-flopping, but I think I've got the forecast down to a T. And a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their name's on screen right now. Their support really does mean a lot and I couldn't do without you guys. So thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.